again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. Today, we are going to be making a rather adorable and oh so simple to make little teddy bear. Yeah, absolutely precious, squeezably soft, and I think you guys are really going to like him. So, Today's video is sponsored by Lion Brand. Thank you very much, Lion Brand. Today, we are going to be using Lion Brand's Pound of Love in the colorway of straw. Yes, love this yarn. It is 100% acrylic. There's tons of yardage, and I have used it for countless projects. Um, it has 1,020 yards, so you could make a whole army of these little guys. Yes, because it doesn't take up a lot of yarn. As for the eyes and the nose and the mouth, those embellishments, I also used Pound of Love in the colorway of charcoal or anthracite. And of course, you are going to need a little bit of polyfill stuffing as well. You could, of course, use some uh, scraps of yarn, you know, uh, that is totally an option. As far as hook size, well, me personally, I used a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. This is a size G. You can, of course, use whatever works best for you. The only thing that you want to be aware of is for your hook size and your yarn weight, this is a weight of four, for the fabric to be tight enough so that the stuffing does not show through your fabric. Other than that, it's pretty darn simple. And as an extra bonus feature, I decided to try to, you know, think a little outside of the box. And I also have a little bunny friend for our little teddy bear friend. And it's the exact same pattern with a variation on the ears. So if you're in the mood for a bunny or a bear, you are in luck. Now, as you can see, the size of these does appear to be a little bit different, that the bunny seems to be a little bit bigger. The weight of yarn can vary, so therefore the size of your amigurumi can vary as well. But regardless, adorable no matter how you look at it. So without further ado, Let's get started. Okay, first things first, we are going to create the head and the body, and we are on round one. Now, the head and the body, believe it or not, they are the exact same pattern, so you're going to need to make two of these. I already have one already made, ready to go. This could be either the head or the body. Regardless, we're going to make the other piece right now. So... Starting off with a slip knot. And a chaining of two. Okay, then into that first chain that we made. Also, you can use a magic ring method or, you know, whatever other method you like. Personally, I find that this works really, really well. So after chaining two, into that first chain, six single crochet stitches. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and then for round two, we are going to be working in a spiral. So I find that this method works really, really well. So for round two, going to be doing two single crochets into every single crochet stitch. So we're going to go from six to 12. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So into that stitch right there, two single crochet stitches. So that is one, and two goes into that same stitch. Then into the next stitch, we have three and four. Next stitch, 
five and six. Next stitch, seven and eight. Next is nine and ten. Next is eleven and 12. I like to get myself a little bit situated before I start in with a, uh, a marker, which I will show you soon enough. So at this point, I like to cinch the center closed, pull out my loop a little bit, and then to make my life a lot easier, I then like to take the end and sew it in just a little bit and then trim off the end. I like everything to be very secure, especially when making stuffed animals or amigurumi or what have you, especially if it may be going to a little person. And so just stitching in this end into a couple of stitches, getting it nice and secure in there. and then I can trim off the tail. Or if you wanna leave it, that's totally fine because this is going to be the interior of the piece. So if you wanna leave it, that's totally fine. All right, there we go. And a little snip snip, there. Okay, and then so that we can hold our place, I grab a little scrap of yarn and going in through the last stitch that we made, that's gonna mark the beginning and end of the round, a little scrap of yarn, and pull that through, and that will mark the end slash beginning of our round. So we shall continue on with round three. Okay, so rounds three, four, and five, we're gonna be doing some increasing at regular intervals. So round three, instead of increasing every stitch, it's gonna be every other stitch. So into this first stitch, two singles. So that is one and two. And then third stitch, it's just one single crochet stitch. So that's one, two, and three, then four and five, four, and then five in the same stitch, and then six in the next stitch by itself. So it's one, two, and then three, one, two, and then three. And you're doing this all the way around. So it's an increase and then a regular stitch. So it's one, two, and then three. So we started with, uh, it was six stitches, then up to 12. This next round, it's gonna be a total of 18 stitches. It's an increase of six stitches per round. So this is a one and a two, and then a three. one, two, and then a three. And we're almost at the end. One, two in the same stitch. And then to that last stitch, that's a three. So at this point, insert your hook grab a tail of your scrap yarn, pull it through, and there we go. So at this point, we should have a total of 18 stitches. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. Perfect. All right, let's continue on. Okay, round four, we're gonna increase again. Instead of in increments of three, it's gonna be in incre increments of four. So it is 
one and two in the same stitch. One and two in the same stitch, then three and four in separate stitches. So next stitch is three, next stitch is four. Then one and two in the same stitch, three and four in separate stitches. One and two in the same stitch, three and four in separate stitches, just all the way around until you reach the end. One and two in the same stitch, three and four in separate stitches, one and two in the same stitch, three and four in separate stitches. We've got one more. So one and two in the same stitch, three and four in separate stitches. And then of course, move your scrap of yarn up so that we have a nice place marker. There we go. So at this point, we should have a total of 24 stitches all the way around. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. Perfect. All right. We only have one more increase round, so let's get to it. Okay, so round five, very much like the last round, instead of uh, a total of four, it's a total of five as far as the number of stitches. So what I mean by that is first two stitches are in the same stitch. So it is one and two together in that first stitch, then three, four, five separate stitches. So three, four, and five, then one and two in the same stitch, then three, four, five in separate stitches. So that's three, four, five, one and two in the same stitch, one and two, then three, four, five in separate stitches, three, four, and five, one and two in the same stitch, then three, four, five in separate stitches. That's three, four, and five, one and two in the same. Oops. One and two in the same, then three, Come on, four and five, and one more to go. So one and two in the same, one and two, then three, I'm getting there, three and four and five. There we go. Okay, and then moving our scrap up. Now this is a way that I've, I've been doing this as far as keeping my place for many years, and I find that it works out really nicely, and it is a great way to use some scrap bits of yarn. Um, as opposed to having to sort of open and close stitch markers, which can be a bit of a pain <laughs> at times. So at this point, we should have a total of 30 stitches all the way around. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 
30. Perfect. Okay, so now from here, we're going to be doing a couple of more rounds, but no increasing, no decreasing, just stitch for stitch all the way around, moving up your little scrap of yarn as you go. And that is going to be for the next six rounds. So for rounds six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, just going to be doing one stitch per stitch all the way around for those six rounds. I'm gonna do that off camera and then I will see you in a bit. Okay, so we are now on round 12. I did six rounds of just one stitch per stitch. And as you can see, it starts to cup upwards because we're not increasing or decreasing. We're just having a uh, an equilibrium of the number of stitches. Therefore, they're not going anywhere. They just create sort of a cup shape. So from here, so that the head slash body has a bit more shaping to it, we're gonna start doing a little bit of decreasing. At the moment, we have a total of 30 stitches. We need to get that down to 24. So what we're gonna do is decrease the two first stitches together and then three regular stitches. So again, in a sense, it is maintaining the uh, the number of five, and I'll show you what I mean. So also, another thing is instead of going underneath both loops of the V, I only go underneath the, the front loop. Now this is just personal preference, but just underneath the, the front loop of the V there. So into there, pull up a loop, go into the next one, just the front loop, pull up a loop. So that's one and two together, and then three, four, and five on their own. So that's three, four, and five, then one and two together. So through the front loop, one and two, There we go. Do those together. Pull through all three loops. And then three, four, and five separate. Three, four, and five. Then one and two together through the front loop. Through the front loop. Pull through all three. And then three, four, and five. Then one and two together. It's one and two together. And separately, three, four. And five, one and two together. And then three, four, and five, a bit more yarn. There we go. So one and two together. There we go. And then three, four, and last stitch is the fifth. Shaboom. Okay, and then moving my stitch marker up. Okay. And so we have decreased the number of stitches from 30 down to 24. Alrighty. Okay, round 13, going to be very similar to round 12. We're gonna be decreasing again for further shaping. So 
the first two stitches are going to be together, and then the next two stitches are solitary. So, just as we had done before, through the front loop. So that's one and two together. Then three and four separate. That's three and four. One and two together. There we go. Three and four separate. One and two together. Three and four separate. One and two together. Three and four separate. One and two together. Three and four separate. And one more to go. One and two together. Three and four separate. And that is, believe it or not, that is the end of how you make the body or the head. You know, it depends on, you know, what you end up doing. So at this point, you can remove your stitch marker and cut your yarn. You're going to want to need, uh, leave a, a nice long tail because you're going to use the tail to sew the head to the body around this opening here. So I'm going to need leave a nice long tail. There we go. And then pull out my loop so that it's not going to unravel on me. Now, with the one that I had made previously, I turned it inside out and then sewed the end in some of these stitches and cut that already. So I only have one end to deal with right now, but we have the head and the body good to go. All right, then we're gonna get on to the limbs and other appendages. All right, let's get to it. All right, so for the first appendage that we're going to be making, we're gonna start with the tail. And it's very similar to what we had done previously with the body, but it's sort of like an itty bitty little body. And you'll see why I say that in just a moment. So I'm gonna start off again, just as we had before by chaining up two and into that first chain, six single crochets. So we already have two, three, four, five, and six. Cinch up my tail. Okay, and then increase those six stitches by doing two singles into each stitch. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, so into that first stitch, two singles, one, and two, three, and four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch in the tail and we shall continue. All right, so I stitched in the tail, already put in my marker here. Now for making the, the bear's tail very, very easy, just gonna be doing one round of regular stitching. So that's a total of 12 singles all the way around. Very, very straightforward. And then, going to do a little bit of decreasing and add a little bit of stuffing so that is a nice poofy little tail all right and one more stitch there we go okay at this point going to start in with the decreasing. So, cause you know, you don't really need a very big tail for this little guy. So right now, since we went up from six to 12 and then a round of 12, now it's going to be going from 12 down to six. So that being said, we're also gonna be going through just the, the front loops only once again. So it is pulling up a loop Pulling up the next loop. So that's one and two. And then three and four together. And then five and six together. seven and eight together nine and ten together and then last two stitches together which is of course eleven and twelve together all together now all together now all together now all right so at this point your tail believe it or not is essentially done what i like to do at this point take out that bit of scrap yarn leave a nice tail for sewing on later snip snip and then pull out your loop so that your piece will not unravel on you and then can add a little bit of stuffing to give it some volume and there you go that is your tail and actually you know, let's just do that right now just a little bit doesn't need to be a ton of stuffing using the back end of your crochet hook helps i find And of course, also it depends on how firm or fluffy you want your pieces to be. And I think this might be a good amount. Just get that in there. There we go. All right, so we have the head and the body in essence done now we just need to make a couple more pieces so let's hop to it all right so next up we have the snout or the muzzle it's this little part right here um the the snout as well as the ear for the bear very very close to each other as far as how they're made um, the ear for the bunny, that is going to be a separate piece altogether. But as far as the muzzle, which is for both pieces, or the ear for the bear, the only difference is one round, quite frankly. Um, so very, very simple. So again, 
chaining two, six singles into the first chain. So that's two, three, four, five, and six. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Then two stitches in every stitch. One and two. Three and four. Five and six. Seven and eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven and twelve. All right. Scrap yarn time. Insert that. Okay. Now, the only difference between the muzzle and the bare ear, like I said before, the difference is um, just one round. Um, so for the snout, it's going to be two rounds for the snout. For the bare ear, it is three rounds. That's it. That's the only difference as far as the construction goes. The, the limbs, a little bit different, so we'll do that separate. But just want to give you that idea that as far as the snout and the bare ear, they are painfully simple and similar to each other. And that's really what I was going for when I decided to show you this pattern. Simplicity works really well. All right, so that's one round and then do another round. And then my little snout will be done. Just got to sew in ends and that sort of thing. Not a big deal. All right. So the snout for my bear is done. Just going to go back in and sew in this end. can pull this out right now. There we go. And yes, our little snout is done. Now, if I wanted to make a teddy bear ear, I would just add a third round of just single crochets. And of course, you would need to make two of them. And this is a, a pre-made ear that I already have. You know, it's very similar, just a little bit bigger. So from here, yes, you can make your snout, your two teddy bear ears. Then we have the limbs. And of course, yes, I will also also blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I will also show you how to make the bunny ear as well. But let's go on to the limbs. Okie dokie. So after doing the head, the body, the muzzle, and the ears and the tail, we're now gonna do the limbs, the arms and the legs. As per usual, start off with a slip knot and a chaining of two. And into that first chain, six singles. That's two, three, four, five, and six. Then two singles into each stitch for a total of 12. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so two singles in each. So we have one and two, three and four, five and 
six. Seven and eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see, we have two, four, six, eight. 10 and 12. Perfect. Okay. So as per usual, I'm going to sew in my end and work in a bit of scrap yarn. Now, at this point, you do have some options as far as variations. Me personally, I, like I said before, I wanted to go for something very nice and very, very simple. So I didn't do any more increasing you know, uh, increases or decreases um, until the very end. You can, however, create more increases if you want to have more of a, a bulbous foot, you know, a bit more of a paw going on. You can totally do that if you want to. Uh, me, personally, like I said, I wanted to go with simplicity. So I'm not going to be increasing anymore. I'm just going to be creating more of a standard tube shape. Now, what I would recommend is if you do decide to do another round of increasing, like when we did the, the tail, after doing another round of increasing, perhaps do a, a solid round no increasing, then do a decrease round, and then do your rounds with no increases or decreases for the length of your limb. So he has a bit of a paw, but it's not this giant ball at the end. Okay, so that is squared up and good to go. I do hope that I'm making sense. I just, I like to give you know, some variation as to what you can do, because what I say is not law. No, I mean, you can make this however you want to, but I think that this, what I'm doing right here is a nice sort of springboard for further creativity. So at this point, after, okay, I just pulled out my tail. There we go. So at this point, we went from six up to 12 stitches. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a total of nine rounds, no increasing, no decreasing, just to create that sort of tube sausage shape. And then we will do a bit more shaping and then the limbs will be good to go. Now, of course, we are going to need to make four of these. A further variation that you could do, I opted not to, is make the arms and legs different lengths. You know, for instance, having the legs a couple rounds longer than the arms, totally up to you. I, for the sake of simplicity, I wanted to make them the same length. So that being said, I'm going to do nine rounds for, you know, the, the rest of this, and I will see you shortly. Okay. Okie dokie. So off camera, I did those nine rounds, not increasing or decreasing at all. Now, at this point, I strongly suggest add your stuffing because after we do the next round after this, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get the stuffing in. So for me personally, I like to add more or less just a little ball of stuffing at the base of the limb. I don't really like to stuff the whole thing um, so that it creates sort of like a teardrop shape. Now the reason why is because yes it will have some stuffing at the bottom but at the the join where the limbs are there's a lot more mobility and I really like that. As always it's up to you. You know you are the the creator of your little one. So that is your decision. Now I think that that is pretty good. Maybe just a squidge more. Just stuff it down in there. You know, I, I like flexibility. All right. So at this point, we're going to do a, a round of decreasing to finish up the limb. And 
So for this, very much like what we did before, it is just going in through the, the front loops only. So that's one and two together, and then three and four together, five and six together, seven and eight together, nine and 10 together, last but not least, 11 and 12 together. And as you can see, the opening is pretty small. So to stuff, <laughs> to stuff your stuffing in all the way down here, a little bit tricky. So that's why I recommend do the stuffing first. And of course, at this point, I can pull out my marker, cut my yarn, leaving a nice long tail for sewing in later. And there we go. So after making three more of these, your limbs will be essentially ready and good to go. Last, but very not least, the bunny ears. So let's get on to that, shall we? All righty. All right, so now for the extra bit with how to make a bunny ear. So as per usual, gonna be starting off in the same fashion by doing a slip knot, chaining of two, six singles in the first chain. So that's two, three, four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so into that first single, two singles. So one and two, three and four. five and six, seven and eight, nine and 10, 11 and 12. Grab my scrap yarn. And yes, I will deal with the tail in a bit, just not this moment. Okay, so I've got the scrap yarn. Now at this point, I'm gonna be doing another increase round, very similarly to when we did the body and the head. It's gonna be two in the first, one in the next. So it's one and two together, three by himself, four, and five together, six by himself, seven and eight together, nine by himself, 10 and 11 together, 12 by himself, 13 and 14 together, 15 by himself, 16 and 17 together, and 18 by himself. And that is all the increasing you need to do. So at this point, going to sew in my tail, and then I'm gonna do three rounds all the way around, no increasing, no decreasing, just three rounds to give the ear a little bit of body. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the shaping for the rest of the ear. I'll see you in a bit. 
All right, so after doing three rounds, no increasing, no decreasing, I have this bunny ear shape. Now, we need a nice, long, slow taper. And I found that the easiest and best way to do that is a very slow decrease. So for that, into the first two stitches, we do a decrease, as always, just through the front loop, stitching those two first ones together. And then that's it. Do the rest of the round with just single crochet stitches. Real simple, right? And then the next round, gonna do the same thing, and so on and so forth. Now for the bunny ear that I created for my little gray one, I went all the way down until I only had six stitches left. So it was a pretty extreme taper from 18 down to six stitches. Um, you know, if you want to, you could end way before that, totally up to you, dealer's choice. Um, but this is really, you know, I found, you know, the, the easiest and most straightforward way of achieving the tapered look of the bunny ear. So then moving my tail up, there we go. And then for the next round, quite simply, just decrease those first two stitches. So through the front loop, pull up a loop, through the front loop, pull up a loop, pull through both of those to decrease, and then just single for the rest of the round. And so just keep doing this until your ear is long enough. And then, you know, as per usual, you can pull out your scrap yarn, cut your tail, making sure that you leave a nice long tail so that you can attach it to the head later. Um, and that's really all there is to it. You know, just keep going on in this same fashion. We'll do one more together. You know, I would say ending with anywhere between, I don't know, maybe six to 10 stitches. You know, you don't want to have too many. I don't think you want your, uh, the ends of your ears where they attach to the head to be more than that. Otherwise it's going to look like, you know, it's perhaps looking sort of like, you know, uh, an arm or a leg attached to the top of his head, which might be a little bit disconcerting. So decrease these two stitches and together, and then just single all the way around. And like I said, it creates a really nice slow tapering effect. So just keep on going in the same fashion until your bunny ear has a nice long taper to it. And, you know, when, when it is all constructed, you know, it'll come down fairly far uh, down the side of the torso. At any rate, there you go. Alrighty, my dears, so that is going to conclude the first part of this tutorial on how to make a bear or a bunny. And in the next part, we're going to take all the pieces that we made today and we're going to stitch them together and create a fabulous little friend. So thank you very, very much for joining me today. And a big old thank you to Lion Brand for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate your continued support. It means a lot to me. Thank you. And you know what to do until next time, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.